I'm only going to take a second before we start up. Everybody will get in when they get in. All right, good enough. Tonight we've got our continuation of our massive Game of Thrones break. Uh, last night we did three cases, got the two cases. Hey, Chris, did uh, I didn't check that tracking. Um, did you get your card, or are you going to be getting that tomorrow, maybe? I didn't know if there's any delays. All right, anyway. These last three cases, this is the second half of the uh, first reverse break, and then the other two cases for the second uh, break of the reverse. So let's get started. We're doing these in number order. Uh, Rittenhouse numbers all their cases. So we had 57, 58, 59. So oh, you can't even see me. 57, 58, 59. So our breaks, uh, our three cases from last night, we had case one and case three were very similar, both good. Case two was not as good. There you are. I'm going to turn this in. And right up there. Now, I haven't had a chance to really watch much in breaks to see how other people are doing. Just uh, what little bit got posted on Blow Up. And, you know, I took a look on eBay to see, uh, you know, what was listed. So I'm not sure that, like, like the booklet, the fact that we got two booklets in our, um, out of three cases, I don't know if that's about average or if that's above average. Gold and let's see. So, looking at the checklist real quick, so all the inscriptions are scarce. Uh, actually, no, there was one, wasn't there one that wasn't scarce? Uh, I'm not even gonna, there's a ton of them, not even gonna bother. Uh, with all the other autographs, so we got two of the booklet, which is scarce. We didn't, so um, we pulled one of the McCann. The Hound Aria Duels. We pulled one of the Common Cersei Duels. We pulled one of the Joe Dempsey's. I think that was in case three. That's a scarce. So. Foil. I think the big thing right now is it's just that it's it's new, so it's fun to see. I know that in all three. Matter of fact, there it is, right there. In all three cases, these are the map marker dragonstone markers. Um, the odds are listed as one per case, but we've gotten two in every case, so I guess the odds were, excuse me, are not uh, correct. And we had the relics are, they've got a weird odd. Uh, the odds are not quite one a case. So we did have, I think it was our second case had two relics in it. Big thing is going to be to get a character sketch. They're, uh, I think I looked on eBay and I only saw one, and it was there's relationships. It was uh, maybe have been the Night King. 
<laughs> oh, Chris, I, I, I'm going to apologize to you up front. Um, so, <laughs> hey, Liz, oh, one second. Um, it's going to come in a box. Oh, you know, for a single card, it's a very big box. But what I did is I put it inside an envelope inside one of the Rick and Morty premium pack envelopes. And then I wedged it between two pieces of foam that are going to leave little bits of styrofoam all over the place when you open it. I just wanted to have it really wedged in there and protected. I did see your uh, message that you sent out to me, Liz, about the archive box. Um, like I said last night, I, I had just I haven't had a chance to even look. I figure this weekend, you know, since we're pretty much not allowed to do anything except for go to work and go home, I'll be able to, you know, check it out. Unless I get a little bit of free time at work tomorrow, I'll uh, try and figure out the breakdown. I know there's a lot in the box, and you had something like said like 102 spots. I mean, that might be too many spots, so whether I, I snake some of them or combine some spots. And yes, I definitely agree. All right, so we got nothing good in our first autographs. <laughs> Hi, Dr. Nick. Spoil. Be back for some more punishment. Quotables. Oof. Some miscut cards. Look at these. Let's I'll just put those off to the side right now. My wife sorted some sets for me, but unfortunately I told her uh, you know there's a lot of damaged cards, base cards right out of the packs. Like a lot of them would have like a big dent in the top. And I, I didn't notice, I'm seeing this now, there's a lot of these cards are all miscut. So she said that, uh, she's like, I'm not checking that, I'm just putting them in order. So I have to go back through them all. Yeah, these are all. You know, I thought that I was going to not have any problems making all these sets since it's only a 60 card base set, but this many damaged cards up. Huh? This is going to be tough. I know how much everybody loves getting their base sets. And if anybody that ends up picking the wrappers, if they want me to send them directly to Rittenhouse, I will do it for the cost of postage, save you the hassle. All right, our first ones. Uh, Stasnair. And the uh, Spice King Pyatt Pre Duel. Ah, uh, that you didn't hear. I'll say it again real quick. I said I was apolog. Uh, did you hear me when I was explaining to you? I was apologizing to you.
talking to you, Chris. <laughs> About the packaging. I was saying you're gonna get a it's gonna come in a larger box than you would think just for a single card. And I have it over overly protected, but I used some styrofoam to really wedge it in place so that it wouldn't move. And uh, when you open it up, you're probably going to get little little styrofoam bitsy balls because I, I cut the styrofoam to fit the box. Especially, you know, with the winter and it being so dry, those little, little bits go everywhere. So I was just apologizing for that. First relic. Guess it could be worse. I could put glitter in there. Relationship. No, stay with the stack. So, um, you watched case one and case two, right, Liz? So, case one, you know, from the hit, the case, the first case of this, uh, this particular break, the first half of this reverse sneak. Yes, there was another booklet. And yeah, a sketch that's not named, you know, it's not a character sketch, so I don't think it's as big of a deal. It's another, you know, a scene sketch. And I think it's kind of all a blur, but I think case the first case from this break also had the um, had the Joe Dempsey bordered in it, which is a scarce. even look on the checklist does it have all of the sketch artists yeah I mean so there's only 12 it could be and I mean I'll guarantee you it was in Charles Hall pretty much can guarantee it was in Hoi Trong uh, it wouldn't have been Louise Draper you know just based off of the styles you know we kind of know who some of those people are And then, I mean, some of the other ones, it's very rare for them to not name. He, he always puts his name on it. I, I mean, I don't know. And there's our second autograph. Well, here, it's just right off to the side. That was the sketch from the first case. And like I said, there's no no name or anything on the back. I wonder if Rittenhouse has any kind of a catalog of all the sketches, like if they scan them in. I know when we were opening up all the Rick and Morty stuff, we had two or three sketches that we couldn't make out the name or didn't have a name, and I, I sent them off to them, and they were able to tell me who they were because they had all um, scans of all the 
sketches. <laughs> I'll put my name on it. Unless there's something extra special in this box, we're already I already got a relic and the two autographs, so I'm not expecting anything else in these last few packs. Well, except for Chris, the, the three of you that are talking right now, everybody uh, was on last night. So, Chris, how are you making out right now with all that is going on in our in our country? You uh, work from home? Or are you straight up on lockdown? Or are you infected? <laughs> Not even trying to. I mean, you can laugh about it. If you don't laugh, what are you going to do, right? All right, we start with Lucy Hayes. Together we stand. And got a gold here of Tom Walsh. Yeah, whatever his name is. consistent I do it all this way and VR 13 Tyrion you know I didn't notice with the other ones uh, the actual picture is inset it's not part of that so it's kind of another cut window And Case Topper, the Lannisters send their regards. That uh, we're four for four on our Case Toppers. Here's hoping for you, Mike. And yeah, when I came home tonight, my wife was saying something that she heard that they might initiate a, a force all businesses to close down for a little while. Or at least not not have the businesses open. You know, if you everybody has to work from home if possible. Yeah, see my office. In the office, there's only three of us, and then there's two that work out of the office. So we're uh, we're pretty good. And besides the the mailman and the UPS guy that comes, we're pretty well uh, set. Uh, maybe that's what she had heard. I'm sure New Jersey will follow suit. All I know is she was worried and going to have to go and do some a little bit more than usual grocery shopping because my father-in-law, we, uh, we put him... <laughs> On house arrest. I mean, he'll come over to our house, but he's not allowed to go out to the store anymore, so we'll do his grocery shopping for him. So we got to get for us, get for him. All 
there's our gold. Well, at least I picked up my uh, my stellar case for this weekend's break, so no fear there. <laughs> you know what? I feel bad, Liz. I have uh, because I'm old now. I bought um, one of those like three packs of readers when we were in BJ's. Here's a gold. Beautiful death number seventy. I'll break it. I mean the whole the whole uh, three pack I think only cost me twenty dollars, but I'll I'll break one of them so I can send it to you to fix. These cheap plastic glasses. Relationships. Oh, I, I saw I saw you. Well, we were all talking about that today, and I, believe me, I agree. I'm I'm as cheap as they come. When I mean, you think about it, I'm gonna collect this set. You know, the season eight, and I took one spot in each break, and not even like one in case one, one in case two, just one spot in each of the two different types of breaks. But I'm a, I'm a very patient and lazy and cheap collector. I would, I tell you what, I would love that reproduction set. Besides the fact that that thing weighs a ton, it really looks nice. I mean, like, just, you can just tell. I don't really collect Star Wars, you know, heavy. I just have, like, a couple of sets from stuff that I broke. But I would probably get that framed. Hey, we got a second relic. That's good. And if you're at all into sketches, I mean, I was, I don't know who I was talking to. No, it was Russell last night. The, um, that sketch set, because there's people that just want an autograph. And that sketch set, in my opinion, goes way too low. I forget what spot it ended at. But, I mean, that's five, six hundred dollars set. And people are taking, you know, three hundred dollar autograph above it. Doesn't make any sense to me. And then even the full size sketches that are spaced off of the five by sevens, they're uh, they're framed. And a foil. And these uh, the box. Is it? Mike, is it you? Who is it? No, no, it was Phil, uh, the Cubs, I think. Somebody wanted the the box if nobody drafted it. I want I think it was the Cubs. Paul Rattray. I am yours and you are mine. Mache. You see, now I'm, I'm a sketch collector of an autograph collector. And Sansa, what is this number? 14. But, I mean, you think about it. So, I'm going to take, you know, I don't know, Samuel L. Jackson, and he's a $300 autograph. I, I really don't know what his number is, just using him as an example. Well, you pick the sketches, you sell them for $600, and buy your Jackson, and then have enough money that you could buy, you know, somebody else. Here's one of the metal cards. 
Which, by the way, the, the For the Throne, these metal cards, I looked on eBay today. The Daenerys one that we pulled last night, somebody had it up there for a really high number, and it had a bid on it. All right, For the Throne, number seven. So this is, is it Jon Snow there in the middle when they were doing the Battle of the Bastards? But there you go, Chris. Now that that works. Like when you say you're you're cheap, like me, that's the way I would look at it. I'd go for the to you know maximize what I paid in my spot. Ugh, this one. We got that one yesterday. Yeah, I would have, like I said, I'm tempted, but there's really only two things that I would take, and that's the um, quotables, that's the, the reproduction set and the sketch. No, not Arrow Guy. We only got one of this particular person, but it's just, it's a nobody, and it's an inscription, and it's not even a real inscription. Yeah. Uh, when I finish this row, I'll show you. It's not like I'm holding out anything. Not like that incredible acting job I had yesterday. There's a gold. That was pretty cool, though, that it was, it really, I mean, I saw it. I knew it, I knew it was there when I opened up the box, you know, took the packs out. But that, that booklet was in the last box we opened. That was just a stroke of luck. I mean, I, I hate it when you, you know, you always limp out of a break. And this is at Eros Vlahos, and uh, it says Game of Thrones. And I, I definitely think some of these people, like the Richard Brake that we got last night, I'm going to guess English is not his uh, first language. Because it just, it doesn't look like he's writing English. Like, same thing there. I mean, that's, that's pretty weak. Now, what they should do is they should have you, um, like, they could write in their native language, like, whatever... Scandinavian language. Like, uh, that, oh, oh, God. What was the one, the one, uh, the one wildling? She's got the card. She got turned into a, into a zombie. Her name was like Bridget Forth, 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 Forth. forth. What, that Adele Smith Kennedy, that Aileen, we got. And you know, we only ended up getting one, which is kind of surprising considering her card's not even listed with a rarity. Like, um, was it the Roger Alum? Alum? You're pretty much guaranteed to get him in every case. Well, I'm 
I'm hoping whatever they end up doing with the shutdowns, that uh, Best Buy stays open. All right, duel number two. Got ourselves Jacqueline and the Waif. So that's a decent one. That doesn't want to focus as usual. After work tomorrow, I wanted to hit the old Best Buy and maybe pick up a couple of movies. I'm not a fan of on demand. If I'm going to pay for something, I want to physically have it. I mean, we did it, uh, except for our main TV. I know we did do the thing where we got Roku's on all of them, and we've got all the the free streaming. Actually, no, that's not true. My son, he uh, he pays for Disney Plus because he wanted to watch all the Star Wars stuff. And then he just upgraded and added ESPN Plus, and then they go and cancel the MLS season. So <laughs> he's out on that. Yeah, I was going to, um, like, I have all the Blu-rays. Here's the other four, The Throne. <laughs> hey, what's up, Vinny? Not on Blu-ray, uh, no, because this I bought them so long ago, but I have the DVDs for one through six, and I figured when these came out, I was just going to wait and figure they'll probably have some nice box set of the whole, uh, all nine of them. Here's For the Throne. It's brand all logged out. Hey, Mike, can you spell Vinny a third way? That way it's like, you know, I don't know how old you guys are. If you remember Tony, Tony, Tony from the 90s, it could be Vinny, Vinny, Vinny. I don't know if I'll go crazy and, uh, like, if they have one where it, like, all comes, like, in a Darth Vader helmet or something. <laughs> Do you guys... <laughs> Did you ever see uh, the movie, uh, that pop star, the Never Stop Stopping, the one with uh, Andy Samberg? That was the same thing. I, I almost bought... Um, all the Game of Thrones, and I, I know they have the one big box set, and I wasn't sure if I should just get the one big box set or go for the individual seasons. Uh, Andy Samberg, it was it's like Pop Star, never, it's like called Never Stop Stopping or something like that, where he's a like a Justin Bieber kind of guy, but his agent is Tim Meadows from Saturday Night Live too, and. Uh, he was Tony, 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 but it was he was the fourth Tony with a question mark. It was Tony, 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 Tony. If you guys haven't seen it and you like, um, yes, you got it. You know, if you like a good mindless humor, fake, kind, it's a. Sort of has a fake documentary feel to it a little bit, because it is. 
But uh, I thought it was a pretty funny movie. But, you know, I'm juvenile, so works for me. Beautiful death. Well, you need to come up where I am, Vinny, where all of our Vinnies are either, they're either Vincent's or Vincenzo's. Because they're all named after their grandfathers and great-grandfathers and great-great-grandfathers so then they'll usually all spell their names i.e. but mostly because it's an abbreviation quotable but uh Chris, this is Jesus Magic. So you saw that movie. Chris Red, which is um, the guy that I don't even know what his character's name was, but he's the, the rapper guy that goes on tour with him. He's on Saturday Night Live now. He is, I thought he was hilarious in that. Beautiful Death 70. So that's the same one we just got the gold of. So, oh, you know what? Gold Beautiful Death goes with the golds. All right. Mark Gaddis. And that's our first Valerian. And Sweet Robin. We are on the box six or halfway point. Well, we did get two um, two relics in case two, and but if we see the um, the Ed Kate duel, then we definitely know it is. See you later, Vinny. There's our gold. Gold relationship. I guess I should look for thick packs again, right? Has anybody seen one of the Sophie Turner auto relics yet? I'm just wondering if that's uh, the same thickness as one of the regular relic cards or if it's a little bit thicker. Because uh, the regular relic cards, I'm really, I'm not paying super close attention. I'm not catching them because uh, they're, you know, about as thick as, you know, probably four base cards. So they're, uh, you know, they're in a pack with just one or two other base cards. So you kind of, 
go right over it. Because I'm assuming it's the same thing as the booklet, that it's just her signature cut and put in a window. There's autograph number one. Yeah, somebody had posted, I know somebody posted a case break and they did really good. I know they got the booklet too, and a sketch. <laughs> Vinny's already gone, Liz. And autograph number two. Oh, he got both in the same case. Wow. I know, uh, Liz, I'll have, to, I'll have to touch base with you. I'm following all of the different insert sets that are on eBay right now. Uh, I know Cardbud and... Might have been Parlor City already. I've posted some sets up. I figure maybe I'll get lucky and grab some there and make it easier on me to finish my set. But I don't know if you're watching any. Put a mask over the camera. Oh, wow. Yeah, I think all the ones I'm, I'm just following all the auction ones. I know somebody had a, a full set of markers up. The foil set was up. Um, actually, somebody had a master set without the relics, I think. Okay, gold relationships number 57. And here's our blue Jack Leeson. I think we're three for four on this one. Yeah, it's our first blue. I think that might be the only blue in the in this release. Tim Plester, Pi, anyone? All right. Second half has to be better. So the the one duel isn't bad. Uh, the gold faceless man, the blue Gleason, fine. None of our uh, none of our inscriptions or anything special. Yeah, we were, it's funny, I was talking to my boss and his wife, they, uh, we always talked Game of Thrones, and I was telling them some of the cards we got, and they were always wondering, like, I wonder why they didn't, uh, kind of like how they do on Westworld, they could have played, uh, Billy Idol's White Wedding, but with, uh, you know, pan flutes and harps.
There's our first acetate card. And we got Denarius. And I'll put that one up there. Well, he, uh, you know, he had his own little singing he did when they were camping around the fire, so. That would have been funny. You know what, actually, that you say that, I wonder if there's contractually he's not allowed. Or does it matter that, you know, because it's not a football product. Relationships, another big time miscut card. Look at that. I'm sure there's plenty that I'm just not even catching as I'm going through these. Yeah, look at all three of those. You know, back when uh, superheroes and supervillains came out, and they had their uh, collation issues, and they were saying about how the something with the printer, because they're also the ones that pack it. And I'm gonna guess it was Cubby, because he he had the biggest problems uh, with it. I mean, like, look at that. But um. I think he said that a lot of people use the same printer. I wonder if it's the same. Like, how do you not even notice that? Because, I mean, Rittenhouse themselves, I, I would assume they never see these cards. Like, they, I'm sure they see the uncut sheets, but then, you know, they get cut and packed. So they're never going to see them again. Quotable. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, they have to be really bad. I'll pull off the side, but I'm going to say half the box that we just went through here. Had some cards that are at least a little bit cut like that. All right, Oliver Ford Davies. All 
I mean, thank goodness it's only on the base cards. I haven't, except for a couple of foils having some, uh, whoop, no, that's a full page, having some sort of, uh, like a depression in them, like some of the base cards had too. That's the only thing I noticed that, you know, in non-base cards. So besides that, all the damage at least is set to them. King of White Walkers. But those, the Chapmans, they were almost all like that. I mean, that was like a known thing that somehow they, those made it through. Gold. Because when we were doing, uh, I don't remember what season that, that she was in because we had pulled a couple and one of them was actually in pretty good shape and I want to say that went really high in the draft because it was pretty uh, pretty good compared to most of the others hey we got a third relic That's really uh, going against the odds. I think I would take a relic over most of <laughs> most of the autographs that we've gotten so far. Like I said, the odds, uh, the odds were like just a little less than one a case. It was a, like I said, it was a weird number, one in one ninety two. So we're now at one in ninety six, right? Chips. Oh, uh, Liz, I think you had said last night you would go to the Philly show. It got canceled. I got an email today couple hours ago. And not even postponed, canceled. Uh, there you go, Mike. I think you were asking for, it, for this uh, autograph. Well...
<laughs> no, didn't you, uh, wait a second. No need to wait. What, didn't you say you were looking for Arrow Guy? Hey, Jeff, how you doing tonight? Foil. Quotables. Um. The autographs have not been all that great. I mean, we still have uh, eight more autographs to go. You're early to find. Come on. There it goes. The big, I would say the big plus right now is that we got three relics, which is really odd. Cersei. So we got uh, Sansa, Cersei, and Tyrion. I think, I, I bet you I said early, didn't he? Didn't I? Easy to find. What can I say? I'm a, I'm a product of the New Jersey education system. Oil. Well, just based off of, there's our other map marker. Just based off of the other three cases, even if this is light case two, there should be one good autograph. Dothraki. So this is the Dragonstone marker. So now we've got seven more chances at a good autograph. Foil. Quotable. You know, one thing that we, we should be. We only pulled one acetate so far. Should be three or four. 
I forget if the odds are 76 or, uh, excuse me, 96 or 70, whatever 280 comes out to. 72 or. Relationship. We're also way behind on the uh, beautiful death cards. Uh, nope, all right, six more chances. Foil. We should be getting an insert, I believe, in every one of these last boxes. The quotables, and I mean not the relationships and the quotables, I'm talking about the beautiful death and the acetate card. And foil. Dominic Carter, and all he said was Lord Janos. And dual autograph of P. Lou Asbach and Mark Rissman. All right, we already we got three duels. I, I can't imagine we're gonna get another duel, so. Hopefully that means we're going to have a at least one big single signer then. None of these packs are standing out. So now with the relics, all right, none of the relics are listed any harder than the other, so it's not like Star Trek Beyond or anything. Gold. like Sam. Yep. Good old Sam Tarley. So 
spoil. Autograph should be one of these like next two packs. Uh, nope. Maybe it's this one. No foil. Alright, maybe it's this one. Maybe it's this one. All right, so now we got five tries at a good autograph. That's a lot. Nell Williams. Better, but not uh, not crazy. <laughs> Some quotable. I think at this point I, I'd be rooting for a sketch over an autograph at the rate we're going here. Foil. Beautiful death. I really started at the same time, Russell. You just came in late. Right around 8 o'clock. That's when I started last night. My time, 8 o'clock. Quotable. Maybe a foil on this last one. Yep. Beautiful death number seventy three. And Tommen Baratheon. I wonder if there's been any uptick in his autograph since uh, 1917. Or I guess I should say because of 1917. Hmm. Not saying anything there. There's our gold. Let's 
Excuse me one second. I have to. I have to call. I'm gonna mute this. Okay, that was. I haven't been to the movies since the summer. I never get a chance to go. Foil. And even then, I. My daughter wanted to see scary stories that tell in the dark. That was not a good movie. There's acetate number three and Davos. So I think that's it for those. <laughs> now, when I mail these cart, well, it'll be more than whatever that, uh, however long it said that the virus can last on. Uh, paper or mail or inanimate objects. Now that cough was just because I am talking while I keep sneaking some sugary candy. Give me some fake energy to not fall asleep. Autograph number one. All right, well, Mike, we still have three more chances. Oh, yeah, that's true. I'm sorry. I saw Rise of Skywalker in the theater. I lied. The movie before that was... Uh, the scary stories to tell in the dark. And then I think before that was Aquaman. Relationship. No, we only pulled one. I wonder if one of these is actually a gold. I missed it. Nope. Excuse me here. That little piece of sugar went down the wrong pipe. I did not see Frozen 2. My daughter, thank God, is too old for that now. The only problem is, is that she has the worst taste in movies. <laughs> like, scary stories. She actually, she wanted to see, and we didn't see it. I talked her out of it. Midway? Which looks so bad. I'm sorry. When I see a movie and it's not Jumanji and Nick Jonas is in it. Yeah, forget it. Oh, my God. We've got two more chances, Mike. She does want to see Wonder Woman 1984 when that comes out. So that, that looks pretty cool. Beautiful death. We really need a sketch in here to, to help pull this thing out. This is by far the worst case we've opened. <laughs> Quotable. I mean, all I can say is maybe we got lucky, and just like in the case last night, you know, there's something big in the last box. 
Beautiful death, 72. Dan Hildebrand, I'm not even, there it is. And let's play a game, Ramsey. And I don't mean he wrote Ramsey in there. Actually, I want to. I really want to see uh, Mulan, but I can't get anybody else in my house to agree with me that it's that they that they want to see it. And I think it looks incredible. Unlike the other live action remakes of the other Disney movies, this one you know looks like they're trying to make a real movie, not you know just a. Just a crappy remake. There's the other gold relationship. All right, we got all of our golds. I haven't either seen any of the live action remakes. I have no desire to, but like I said, the, but the commercials for this one though, they just really, just looking I mean it's like you know crouching tiger hidden dragon you know house of flying daggers it just reminds me of that kind of stuff and I never saw the original cartoon all I know is that it had uh, I think it was Eddie Murphy as a talking uh, dragon and I don't think they're gonna have that in this one if they do then they know it stinks because they're not putting it in any of the commercials Okay, we're about at the first autograph. I'm afraid to look. Not there. Oh, come on. We've got a big inscription. That's all I'm thinking. I never saw the uh, the cartoon of Mulan, so I don't know what the captain is. I'm not seeing anything, and I'm trying to see if I can feel like a soft sleeve in here. I'm going to start going top to bottom because I think the autograph is going to be near the bottom. Foil. Yeah, but like most of these, like like you said, like Dumbo. Dumbo just didn't even look good to me. The previews. All right. I'm not even looking. Cause I'm afraid. And I'm not even joking when I say I did not look. Well, 
foil. Quotables. Foil. You know, the, the terrible thing about this is that no matter what that autograph is, it cannot save this case. I hate to say this case. There's a beautiful death. Was uh, this was god awful. It's funny because we were actually with the, all the Disney stuff. We were just talking about that. Like I have to organize my uh, my DVDs. They're all out of whack. And we were my son and I wanted to start watching Breaking Bad, but my I have all the uh, seasons and season one disc one. I can't find it. Beautiful Death sixty nine. This is this Andy Kelliger. Please, please, please. Oh. I'm I'm sorry. I really am. Don't look. Francis McGee. All right, recap. Uh, this is by far the worst case we opened. The case two at least had one or two decent things in it. Uh, highlights on this case: we got a blue Jack Gleason. Our, our Valerian autographs were nobodies. Our full bleed autographs were nobodies. Our gold autographs. We got the faceless man. Uh, our duels. We got the one with uh, Euron and Harry. We got Faceless Man and Waif. And then we got that Spice King one. Who cares? The inscriptions. I don't think we had anybody at all. I mean, I guess the Shea one isn't bad. The I am yours and you are mine one. Uh, Richard Brake, King of White Walkers. I guess that one's not bad. Uh... I mean, we got Tom in, but he just wrote his name. He didn't have anything in it. So I guess the highlight is we got three relics in this case somehow. Um, Cersei, Sansa, and Tyrion. Hopefully, they don't have anything listed about one being any rarer than another. But hopefully, the Sansa at least is rare. I mean, I know in the first three cases, we did not pull hers. But we pulled both of the other two. So again... Uh, I apologize for this case, but that one was rough. I'm going to stop the video so it can start to save, and hopefully within about an hour it will be saved. And then we will, uh, I'll be right back for uh, Reverse Break 2 Case 1. So, thank you for watching. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mike. I will be back in just a few minutes.